What's up, gamers? Dreamcast guy here, and this is my brutally honest review for Avatar: Legends of Pandora. Wait, that's not even the name of it. It's Frontiers of Pandora. This game is so incredibly boring, I literally can't even remember the name of it. Now, I review a lot of games, stuff that's flashy and fun and cool, but also a lot of stuff that's bad. In my opinion, boring is worse than bad. If you have a game that's a complete dumpster fire, an absolute train wreck of funny glitches or complete breakdowns of core game mechanics, at least that's interesting to pick apart, at least for me as a reviewer. This game is just so bland and basic, it's difficult to even explain to you why you probably shouldn't buy it. Now, let me be clear about something. This game is definitely beautiful. Getting a chance to see this, well, very sweeping landscape of incredible flora and fauna flying through rainstorms or trying to blow up robots before they kill your Navi buddies. This game is visually appealing. In fact, it's practically a tech demo, this generation's crisis. My problem is that it's just never actually exciting to play because it's so incredibly repetitive. Let's get into this. If you could please give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. So first and foremost, I do want to say I've not watched the Avatar movies. I think I saw about 20% of the first one 10 years ago when it came out and it was interesting, you know? I like the idea of aliens struggling against humans and how we are the invaders in that story, that the, the humans are actually the bad guys. I mean, Avatar seems like an interesting enough setup, but Frontiers of Pandora, it is the most paper-thin plot I've maybe ever seen. We're playing as some little kid Navi who have been kidnapped. They're part of this clan called Saren too, and somehow the humans have landed and wiped them out other than these couple kids that they've now put into re-education centers. They're calling this the Ambassador Project. They're essentially trying to raise kids to be super weapons, giving them human training, human knowledge, human expertise, and then, you know, saying, all right, now go hang out with the Navi, so if they need sleeper cell agents, they can take down the Navi from the inside. But then the whole thing falls apart. The humans just decide to kill the Navi, and so you end up having to escape. Due to some unfortunate circumstances, they put you into cryosleep, and now, waking up 15 years later, the Navi have found you and are asking for your help to battle the Sky People now that they've returned. Okay, so the reason I don't like this story, just in general, is because it's trying to do two separate tropes at once. It's trying to do the fish out of water, oh man, I don't understand what's going on, I'm trying to learn the ways of these people, and simultaneously, it's trying to be your typical cringy one-man army plotline, and both of them, I feel like, just are not really gripping. They're not really effective. Having Navi figure out things like knock-knock jokes, having 25 cutscenes in a row where people explain about the flora and fauna, the connection to nature that Navi share. I think the actors in this game do good, but the script itself is terrible, especially because the bad guys are pretty much cartoons. The human villains are so ridiculous, they're literally shooting kids and trying to destroy the planet of Pandora by using pollution. Which brings me to the gameplay loop. This game is incredibly repetitive. You're literally doing the same thing over and over and over again, which is going to bases and shutting them down. Now you can do this in a couple different ways by being stealthy or going all out, and you can kind of focus your efforts onto getting good with traditional Navi weaponry, like a grenade launcher that's in like a slingshot or a typical bow and arrow, or you can focus more of your classic human training to get good with shotguns and machine guns. But the problem is that you just do this over and over and over again. Every single freaking mission in this entire game is just land at a location, scope it out, Usually you're pulling a couple levers and hacking a couple panels and then it's done. The land is cleansed and then that territory becomes unpolluted, which usually unlocks new side quests and new organic collectibles. Which brings me to the crafting system. So this has a terrible, a terrible 
leveling system. I'll actually just straight up say it. A lot of this game is bland. I think the leveling is bad. It is actively annoying. The way this works is that each part of your gear has some sort of unspecified level to it. So if you have a bunch of level five gear equipped, you're level five. As you start to equip level six gear, then you become level six. Now, the way this actually works is that you do a collection of things. You either go out into the environment and collect crafting materials, or you raid a bunch of bases until you get enough currency to buy an upgrade. Now, the problem is that this is not optional. They make you constantly go out into the ecosystems and scrounge to upgrade your gear. If you're trying to do a level seven mission and you're level six, you're pretty much going to get one shot. Now, in general, your Navi doesn't have a lot of health just as a general principle, because obviously you're a blue guy running around pretty much butt naked against mechs. But I still think it's annoying when you're trying to play your 20th base and you're still getting one shot because you didn't do enough of the hunting minigame. Okay, yeah, so Navi have this special universal connection to Pandora. They can hear the flora and fauna. Plants and animals are not just these placid things. They can feel their life force. And that's a huge part of the story itself. You can connect your USB tail to some flowers to unlock new abilities or, or pick up certain plants to get a big health boost. But the biggest part of this is that you can track and hunt things to get specific crafted upgrades. Finding a vine may upgrade your bowstring, or you can make a weapon mod that's going to increase the storage capacity of your pants if you manage to hunt a particular animal. And I guess this system is true to the universe of Avatar, but that doesn't make it fun. Going into this and just doing the same activities over and over and over again to unlock the next section of the map, it never gets fun. Like, even after I'm unlocking a ton of skills, there's like the system where every time you finish these incredibly basic ass quests, you get a couple new talent points. And there's five different skill trees, survivor, warrior, hunter, rider, and maker. It's basically saying, are you better at crafting stuff? Are you better at cooking stuff? Are you better at air combat? Or are you better at sneaking? I went very heavily into the warrior tree to just up the heck out of my base damage. And I think that's probably a good move. I'm not here to make peace. I'm here to make war. The problem is that none of these skill trees are exciting. The fact that it's just basic percentile upgrades. Oh, you can carry a little bit more ammo. Oh, you can be a bit more sneaky. The best games create that sense of progression where your character at the beginning of the game is different than your character at the end of the game. And Avatar never conveys that. When you're teaming up with the resistance, when you're out there trying to find food so you can make your hunger meter stay full, like never did I feel connected to the world of Pandora. It always feels like a beautiful, flat tapestry of boredom. I'm sorry for being so negative. I wanted to actually go into this a lot more positively because the idea of it seems great. The trailers looked great. The idea of Far Cry in space seems cool. But man, even the most hardcore fans, I would not recommend you buy this for the full $70. Wait for this thing to be like 10 bucks or 15 bucks. But okay, so we've heard a lot of bad and a little bit of good. Let's go over to the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Avatar Frontiers of Pandora a 6 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching gamers. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.